Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're welcome to worship this day. Nancy has uh, taken the weekend for a little time with her um, grandkids and her daughter, and so um, that's why she's not here today. Um, we're going to do some music that is um, recorded on our uh, video slides. However, I just need to tell you ahead of time that uh, we have had some kind of crazy things happening with my computer again, so um, be prepared for just about anything. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it, but anyway, um, it will do what it will do, and we'll have to adjust accordingly. And so I will thank you in advance for your patience. Um, I also just wanted to remind you all that our, uh, our annual gathering for LCMC is coming up and uh, there were several people that kind of were showing maybe a little interest, but uh, the council did decide that if anybody wanted to attend that um, we would pay their uh, registration fee, which is $200. Um, if we could get that registration taken care of before April 15th, or excuse me, not April, August, <laughs> August 14th. So um, if you are at all considering that, please give me a heads up and let me know, and then we can um, kind of look through things and then get you registered if you decide that's what you want to do. If you want to know more information about what's going on, you can um, check on the website that they have. Uh, it is www.lcmc.net and then uh, slash annual gathering. And so um, just take a look at that website and then you can kind of look for yourself at uh, what offerings they're having there. It's going to be a good conference talking about discipleship in this crazy post-COVID world that we're living in. And so I would encourage you if you're able to uh, check that out. Again, it will be in Lakeville, Minnesota, just on the southern edge of the metro area, and so uh, a really nice area to, to visit. Are there other announcements you want to share this morning? Yes. Women of the Word meet on Thursday. Women of the Word, Thursday at 1, here at the church. Okay, any other announcements? Additions to the prayer list? Okay, um, I did have one addition to the prayer list, which I think many of you had learned about, and that was for the family of Doug Langer, who um, unexpectedly passed away on Thursday. I uh, believe services will be this week. Um, can't remember the particulars on the on the service dates and times, but I will try and post that to our Facebook page so that you can um, know about that. Um, and so we'll be in prayer for his family and, of course, um, all those that we've been praying for throughout uh, the course of time. And so uh, I believe those are our announcements for today. If you want to prepare now for our confession and forgiveness. If you would please stand. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Make us to know your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth and teach us, for we are the God, you are the God of our salvation, for whom we wait. If we say we have fellowship with God while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. We take a moment for silent reflection on our personal sin. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, 
blot out our transgressions, wash us thoroughly from our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with a willing spirit. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. As the word of God proclaims, if any are in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and our first song today is This is Amazing Grace. Peace. 
prayer of the day. God of all grace, you delight in your children and give them the kingdom. Give us faith to trust in your loving provision that we might not worry needlessly, but live in freedom and gratitude through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue now with our scripture readings for the day. The first reading for today is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. Please read responsibly Psalm 33, 12 through 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and behold all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his grace on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him and those who wait upon his love to fight their lives from death and to feed them in the time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. If he and our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have put our trust in you. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of all received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more, more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commanding him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was up so that he should not see death, was, was taken up so that he should not see death. 
and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended to having pleased God. And without faith, it, was imp it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events yet unseen, in reverent fear, fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go out to a place that he was to receive an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that was has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power con to conceive even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born ascendant, descendants, as many as the stars of the heaven, and as many as the innumerable, innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having <coughs> acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had, had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Here reads the ends of the Thank you, Bob. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke chapter 12, verses 22 to 34. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouses nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. 
Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be unto Christ. Amen. Our gospel reading today is really a continuation of the message that we heard last week. Jesus told the parable of the rich fool. You may recall that we talked about idolatry and we heard the warning not to put our trust and hope in ourselves, our work, or our material goods and possessions, but to put our trust and hope squarely on Christ and him alone. Jesus now expands on that message today by telling us not to worry or to be anxious about life, food, or clothing. He reminds us that God provides for even the most insignificant of creatures in the kingdom, the birds, specifically the ravens, a bird that which is despised by many and a symbol of death and misfortune. If God cares for and provides for them, how much more will he provide for us? whom he calls his children, whom he loves and values. Jesus tells us that we are children of a heavenly Father who knows exactly what we need. And so we do not need to worry about it or to be anxious. It is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom and everything we need. And yet our world reminds us that there are many people on our planet who are starving. For example, we hear of people with food shortages in Syria and Afghanistan, Yemen, <coughs> Ethiopia, and South Sudan, and Madagascar, and the Republic of the Congo, and other places. There are those who have such food shortages that from one day to the next, they're not sure what they will feed their children. For those who live in this constant state of hunger, we have to wonder, how did they hear Jesus' words? The words, for life is more than food and the body more than clothing. What exactly is Christ's promise to those who do not have enough to survive and subsist for each day? I believe that is a very difficult question and one which you might ponder today. The best answer I could come with was the community called the church. When we have a community of believers, people that follow Christ and subscribe to his ways and his teachings and to trusting in him, we know that God uses each one of us to serve him in his kingdom. Thereby, we as his servants are to serve one another when they are in need. And so, for those who do not have enough, their answered prayer is, quite honestly, us, the church. For others who do have enough food and clothing and shelter, most of us probably in this room, so that we don't have to worry about it, at least not on the daily basis, where our next meal is going to come from, there are other worries that plague our minds, such as worries about our health or the worries about 
one of our loved ones' health. I can think of a number of times when I have had an issue and needed to have some testing done in um, either more x-rays or uh, more blood tests or blood work done. And uh, you know, that first thought in your mind is, oh boy, it's something bad. But then we get a call back from the doctor that everything looks fine and we don't have to worry about it. And you know, all that praying in between while we're waiting for the results uh, somehow just seems to slip right out the door and we forget all about uh, God and um, the prayers that we just prayed. And so that is, I think, a common, a common issue that all of us have. There are other worries, of course, um, our jobs, our careers, our children and their safety and their health and their growth. We worry about our families and the relationships that we have. We worry about the effects of COVID on ourselves and our family members and on society in general. And uh, we worry about um, our economy and our government and our politics and how all these different things affect our lives down through the grapevine. And so there are many worries that we have and many things that we are anxious about. So much anxiety in the world, um, you might notice, has caused a lot more people to start talking about depression and mental health. Um, you hear all over the internet and in the news about the effects of depression, anxiety, and these things. And sometimes um, we talk about it so much that it starts to cause us to feel anxious and worried, um, which I think is a normal reaction. But sometimes when we're anxious and we're worried, um, the last thing we think of to do is to trust God and to just pray to Him for comfort and security and support. And that's just the worries of people that have an abundance of most things and that are not starving day to day. What does it mean for us as those who would, the world would consider to have an abundance of things, what does it mean for us to seek the kingdom? Jason asked me an important question this morning when we were talking about this, and he said, where is your treasure? What is your greatest treasure? Um, wow. <laughs> That question, my immediate first thought was myself. <laughs> I mean, how telling, right? Our greatest treasure is ourselves, which, you know, that's probably human nature, but, you know, we're worrying about ourselves and the things that we have or don't have or all the different ways that we're not fulfilled in life or that um, things we want are, are taking really, like, long, hard, hard time to come to us. And, uh, yeah, our greatest treasures are often ourselves, and we spend a lot of time on those things. What is your greatest treasure? You know, it could be just about anything. It could be a person or people. It could be financial security. It could be... Um, your possessions, the, the toys that you have at home, your, your boat or your RV or your computer or whatever else. These things we do tend to treasure. There was a pastor um, that I, I was friends with who said very often that he could tell what your treasure was by looking at your, your checkbook. Most of us um, well, I don't know how many people even use their checkbook anymore. I know probably a lot in this room, but for younger generations, um, they don't even know how to use the checkbook. <laughs> They're using PayPal and Venmo and all these other digital ways of um, handling their finances. But 
I think another way you can uh, check where your treasure is is just how you spend your time. And uh, I know for myself that I could be spending my time, my, my spare time, my free time, uh, in a, a more productive or a more God-honoring way. Would God say that I'm using my time and my treasure, um, my financial gifts, would he say that I was using them for his kingdom? It's an important question. What is our greatest treasure? There's a lesson from Abraham that I think we can also take something from this morning. When we talk about the things that we worry about, um, the whole list that, that was in, in Hebrews, all the different people of faith over the generations certainly had their worries. Abraham was worried about um, not having any heirs, not having descendants, because in his day and age, that's where his security would come from. And uh, having children would mean that he would have always a place to live, shelter, food, um, resources. And so when he talks to God, he's saying, you haven't given me any heirs. And so he's worrying just, you know, how is God going to provide? And, and then God takes him to look at the sky and see the stars and, and promises, him, promises him that he would have those descendants. And then for some of you, you might know that that story kind of plays out in strange ways where Sarah worried also about this, that they had no heirs, and yet then they tried to kind of take matters into their own hands by giving um, her servant to Abraham, and then he conceived, um, they conceived Ishmael, which then created some more worries between Abram's wife and the servant, and then what to do about Ishmael if I'm also supposed to have a real heir. These things compound in our relationships when we do not fully trust God, or when the promises seem to be delayed. I don't want to suggest that Abram's heart was not in the right place, but certainly the worries of the world started to take a foothold in his life. And then there were consequences to that. But God kept his promise, and he did provide an heir and descendants more numerous than we could count. All these things that we worry about and we're concerned about, um, God says not to worry about. We are instead supposed to seek the kingdom and all these things will be added to us. So if we are seeking God's kingdom, all the things that we need will be provided, one way or another. Maybe not in this life as the, uh, they talked about in Hebrews, where they did not see the full fulfillment of their promise, but they saw it from afar, from a distance. And they, um, how does it say here? Um, they were looking for a better country, that is, their heavenly one. And that's, I think, what it means to seek the kingdom, to be looking beyond just the practical things of this world, but yes, we do need to have those things provided for us, but to think of the heavenly things and to trust that God will make good on his promise. And one way to remind ourselves of that is to spend time in God's word. If we're looking 
for God's promises, we will certainly find them in his word. So if you're ever feeling doubtful or if you're ever feeling like um, anxious and nervous, the first place we should all go is to his word and to um, the places where we have seen his promise fulfilled. And as Hebrew shows us, there are many. Jesus says, provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. That's kind of a difficult way of saying that he himself is the treasure of heaven. And he himself is the gift that never grows old. For where he is, our hearts will be also. So if we're seeking the kingdom and we're trusting in Christ and we're turning to him in his word and we're turning to him in his supper to be fed and nourished at his table, God will certainly provide. And not only that, he will also calm our fears and worries by giving us relationship with one another in our church and giving us his word through other people, through his scripture, and through acts of love and service toward one another. This message is a little bit more heavy on trusting and not worrying, but um, the main thing is just to remember that Christ loves you, that you are a child of his kingdom and an heir of all his promises for life, forgiveness, hope, and grace. All these things will be added to us when we seek his kingdom and love Christ and trust in him. Amen. We're going to sing a song um, that's a little bit newer in the contemporary Christian music realm. Um, it's called The House of the Lord. It's a beautiful song. It's a little more upbeat. But um, if you know it, or if you don't know it, just feel free to follow along, and um, I hope you will enjoy it. Quiet, oh, shout out your praise. 
until we join him and all those that we have lost in the everlasting city, whose architect and builder is God, Lord, in your mercy. All these things and more we ask in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Just a quick word of thanks today for offerings uh, received in our offering plates at the entrance of our sanctuary and also for gifts that are given um, through the mail or online. We thank you. Um, you can use our website at United Lutheran uh, Shelby, excuse me, you, yes, United Lutheran Shelby.org. If you go um, on the menu bar, there's a little tab there that says giving, and you can just follow the steps as you, as you click on that link. And so thank you for all the gifts received today. Let's pray. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All are welcome to this table of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Please come forward for this meal.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is going to be Amazing Grace. And uh, before we do that, receive the closing blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let's sing Amazing Grace together.